Hey guys, Seth, Seth David Films here. I want to talk to you about my wedding day gear for 2022. And although a lot of people do these videos and there's some amazing ones out there, um, I just kind of want to talk about my gear and why, where I'm at um, and kind of be real because there's a lot of pretty gear out there, but I just want to kind of tell you what I'm actually using and what's actually worked in my fourth season of wedding filming so to speak. So the first place I want to start, which is a weird place to start for most videos, is the bags. Um, when I started, I just used whatever bag we had, but it wasn't enough for the gear I had. Uh, I didn't have, I think I owned one camera, maybe two at the time. And I just, I rented a lot and I wasn't sure what lenses to use. Used a lot of manual lenses for my old film cameras, like actual film cameras. Um, but then I progressed and realized I needed a bigger bag. So for a while there, for two seasons, I was using oh, this monster. And this monster is a used low pro and it's great. I got it used at my favorite camera shop ever, Focal Point in Dallas, Oregon. And it has a cool compartment that pops out. Big suitcase, tons of storage. And in this compartment, like most bags, you, I think back then they had this whole system that you could replace them and whatever else, but that's kind of defunct now. But it's had the cool multi-pocket storage systems. You could see I probably had like my drone here. I probably had um, probably a bigger lens here. And it's really deep. So I actually could put a couple different, like my smaller lenses, like some of my old manual film lenses in here. And this was great when you could just stroll, roll in, get to the wedding and keep it in the corner and shoot from there. Now, the only problem with this is it's freaking heavy. It's heavy without the cameras in it. So with all my gear in it, it's really heavy. And this became a problem when you couldn't roll on gravel or grass, or hypothetically, when you're shooting at Mount Hood. Because this came with me, or I think it was my second shooter, Eleni, on our lap on the ski lift as we went up to shoot a Mount Hood wedding. It was awful, <laughs> it was terrible. But I still use it the rest of the next season um, and it got the job done. But I realized I don't want to have to drag a big old heavy thing behind me. So my solution has been these three bags. Um, and really these two primarily. Now this bag I actually used for holding medical equipment for my daughter. And that's another story from another time. Um, and it's just your simple low pro, not super expensive, rather rather affordable um, backpack. And it's got your, the awesome, part of my zippers are broken. I don't have those anymore. Um, it has your classic pouches. It's disgusting. And we'll talk about, and, I, and that's just from years of use and using it not for cameras before that. Um, but it, it's, it's a great convenient bag. And I usually, I've put up to four camera bodies with three or four lenses in here very tightly, but they fit. And with the, the movable compartments, you kind of can do whatever you want. And the reason why I love it is because it's a backpack and my hand is no longer occupied while I'm trying to move from one location to the other. Um, and that's what I realized is so important during my wedding day. I need to have my hands free. So this is my carry bags to the wedding. But I'll be honest, I don't use this throughout the day. Often I'll put it either into the bridal suite and then from the bridal suite, I'll move it by the DJ booth later um, and take out the gear I need from it. But all my gear doesn't fit in here, so that's where we need a couple other bags here. One thing I also realized is I don't need to carry my drone around all day. 
Um, there are some rare instances where I do get to fly the drone later for some cool couple shots on cliffs and hills. Uh, but for the most part, the drone is the first part of the day and then I'm done. Pack it away in the bag or, in some cases in the car, forget about it until the next wedding. But throughout the day, I realize I always need to have at least two cameras on me and I need access to usually sound equipment where I'm trying to mic and laugh people throughout the day. So the first bag I used was this awesome bag, which is by Copper River Bag Company. And it is leather, super thin leather, and you can add a, a camera body or two. I would often uh, put like big lens, camera body, some, uh, another camera body with a smaller lens, and then I put um, recording equipment around it when I'm trying to put different mics on different people throughout the day. And then I would also add things like on the back pocket here, I would add some of my bride miking equipment like the what I put around her leg and some other things. But it's very versatile and I still use this for a lot of shoots when I just need one or two camera bodies and maybe one or two mics because it's bulletproof and it's worked through everything. But then I started using straps and strap systems change your life. Um, it's very useful for a photographer. It's a little more tricky for videographers because we are often using tripods and gimbals and having to unstrap and then put it into our gear next. But me and several other videographers love these straps. And these, this is Holdfast. And Holdfast is kind of the standard. They were one of the first, if not the first, to do the kind of leather strap wedding day. And what I love about it is it keeps all my cameras on my side, and then you also can add little attachments and lock it into your belt, and they don't swing around. And I know there's some amazing ones out there. I know Peak Design does some great strap systems, and there are another um, companies out there, because every, every strap has kind of their hold back. Even Holdfast has sometimes a pinching issue, uh, which some uh, photographers and I have chatted about. And But for me, I love it. And I realized I loved it so much that I, I got the bag with it. Now, Holdfast is not an affordable option by any means. I believe this bag was around $500 for this fairly simple bag. But what it does do is it gives me pretty solid safety and pretty solid support for my lenses. And what I would do, this fits four Sony Z batteries. So I put my batteries in here and I'd put um, usually my telephoto lens because it's the one I don't use all that often except for ceremony. And then probably four lav mics and maybe my, uh, the, my the recorder that I use to record the DJ sound as well. Um, and this way I have access and even the back pocket here, I usually oh, still have it. Uh, the covers for the mics and the labs if there's some wind. And this, the best part about it is it connects to my straps on the back. So you actually, it's on my butt basically co covering it. And so I can just reach behind, grab my gear, do what I need to do, put the other gear in there and move on. And my hands are free. And so I have two camera bodies, two lenses. I have another lens, maybe two lenses and some microphones behind me, and I can pretty much shoot a wedding day with just that setup, hand still free with this bag, this strap. And then when I need to grab the rest of my gear, I can put this backpack on because it sits above where this sits on my butt. So I actually have this bag here, this on my butt, and if I need to grab the drone, the drone's usually hanging out on this, so I'll throw this on the side. So here I am with three bags and a strap, still with hands free to drink my tall Americano and my bottle of water while I go to the next shoot. It's changed the way I've shot weddings. So the first step for me, which changed everything, was having a good bag system. I got rid of the roller and I went to this three, well, two or three bag system, depending on how the day goes. So there you go. That's my first part of my gear for 2022. That ended up being a long one. Hopefully I can concise on the next ones. Um, thanks for watching and I hope to see you around. Take care guys.